Hi! In this video I will share the results of my experiments where I looked for the best placement for case fans. An important topic, because they can significantly reduce the temperature of internal components. But there is the catch. Cases can be very different from each other. They can be big, small, black, white, transparent, cheap, expensive, but most importantly, they can differ from each other in terms of ventilation. Roughly speaking, they can be divided into two categories – well-ventilated and solid coffins. And in each of them, fans will behave differently. To smooth out this inaccuracy, I'll run all tests twice. First, with the MSI Gangrene 100, as the case with especially bad ventilation. And then with the same MSI, but with the front and top panels removed. This way I will keep the position of all the fans, but now we will have temperatures on both the perfectly and poorly ventilated cases, and you will have to figure out which of these two scenarios is closer to you. And yeah, I think you have already realized that this is a translation of my video from two years ago, so the lip sync is a bit off and the picture quality is degraded because of YouTube compression, but trust me, it doesn't matter, because the information is useful, so stay here. For my tests, it is crucial to have the same fans, so BeQuiet's Ukrainian office sent me their 140mm pure wings. Thanks, guys. Their performance is close to the average computer fan, but quieter. The company claims 1000 RPM. These are values with no resistance whatsoever. If you put them in their place, you get about 900. These kinds of performance can be very roughly translated into 11, maybe 1200 RPM in the equivalent of the standard 12 cm fan. Once again, very roughly translated. In my opinion, this is the maximum for the average user. If you climb higher in RPM, then the noise will begin to annoy. The configuration of the test system is on your screen. The processor generates approximately 110 watts of heat with the help of OCCT stress test. The cooler is Deepcool Gamax 300 at fixed RPM. The GPU emits about 200 watts of heat and its RPM are also fixed, load down through for mark. Each test lasted 10 minutes, the air temperature was 22 degrees. To get a better idea how fans are affecting the temperature, we need to set a reference point. We need results without them at all. The case with perfect ventilation did well, these are quite normal results, but since any case creates some resistance, even small meshes affect the temperature, we are interested in the monstrous result of a closed case. <coughs> on the verge of a fall. Let's do something. With a single fan in a hand on an open case, you can immediately forget about these two places. One improves CPU temperature at cost of depriving the graphics card of fresh air, it gets 11 degrees hotter than if you don't put any fans at all. And the second one just doesn't affect anything. No matter how you put it, it doesn't work. These places will be useful only in combination with other fans. The front bottom fan was not very efficient. As with most cases with three fans in the front, the bottom one blows under the shroud and takes a little part in cooling the main compartment. Some of you don't have a decorative shroud and this arrangement will be really helpful, but not mine. Don't worry, if your case has a mount on the bottom and it blows directly into the main bay, you should check out the results of that location, cause you have it blowing under the GPU and mine do so, that's the logic here. As you can see, the front middle intake and the exhaust on the rear top show better results, but the best was exhaust on the rear panel a solid increase on the CPU and a small but noticeable on the GPU. It's more interesting with the bad ventilated case. Here are the results of all the arrangements except for the rear one. Among them the front middle intake which blows under the GPU looks good. I could recommend it, but… But what is it? Can you… can you hear it? Why is the music playing, like before boss fight? It's all because the real boss of the gym has entered Do the you chat. Like what you see? Minus 23 degrees on the processor and 8 on the graphics card. This is a must have location in any case. It alone can significantly reduce the temperature of internal components, so if you are building a PC, make sure you have an exhaust fan here. It doesn't cost much and plays a very important role. And if you decide to buy one, I'll leave links on several good models in the video description. By shopping through them, you'll support my channel. Having two fans, I'll use the results of the previous measurements. The inefficiencies go away, but the rear exhaust is used everywhere. 
And here's the logic. If your case has a well-ventilated front panel, so there are plenty of openings for fresh air, it's a bit better to put an intake under the GPU. This is a very popular place and seems to be found in any case. Compared to top rear exhaust, you can gain a couple of degrees on all the internals. But if your front panel is solid and there's nowhere to get fresh air from, it's much better to have an exhaust at the top. Pay attention to how much cooler the GPU gets and how useless the fan can become if its operation is interfered by the case design. By having three fans, you can try several schemes. With the well-ventilated case, the option with two intakes at the front and an exhaust at the back hardly works. The gain is there, but it's not worth it. Also, the three exhausts are useless. I don't think it's worth it to reduce the processor heat at cost of increasing it on a graphics card, much less pay money for it. The best scheme was one input under the GPU and two exhausts in the back. With it, at least, we don't ruin anything. For experimental purposes, I tried installing all three fans on the intake and suddenly they had the best performance. Wow, what an interesting result, I thought, and then put the front panel back in. This configuration works as long as it's in lab conditions, meaning there's no resistance at all. And when I say no resistance, that means zero resistance. If anything appears, the efficiency drops off dramatically. So dramatically, that in fact one exhaust in the back will easily outperform these three intakes in the front. Of course, I've tried the classics on the bed ventilated case. Two in the front, one in the back. It turned out badly. The GPU heats up more than it used to, and considering that in a gaming PC it can take up more than half the cost, I think twice. As an option, you can put either one intake under the GPU and two exhausts, or all three on the exhaust, but in each scenario the gain will be quite small. For fans, well ventilated case responds well to either three intakes with one exhaust, or two on each side. Three exhausts with one intake do not live up to expectations. Nor does the idea of installing four fans in a bed ventilated case, because there's functionally no difference between the three. At least I don't see it. Further filling with five and six fans leads to very small improvements. As a result, you can clearly see how important it is to put a fan in the back to blow out heat. If we take as a hundred percent the result that can be achieved with six fans, then 70% of the success is because of this little guy. A lot of that efficiency can be due to the tower design cooler blowing directly into that fan. If you want me to make a separate video where I do test with a box cooler, then leave a comment. In my opinion, two fans are bang for a buck. They give a nice boost, are inexpensive and are quiet, because <laughs> there are only two of them. Having that much, I'd place them on the exhaust. But if your case doesn't have a top mount, no problem. The intake under the GPU is good too. Just make sure the wires aren't blocking it. Three fans is the maximum that still makes sense. The gain is already quite small and to achieve it, you have to sew it. From my tests, four, five, six fans don't make sense and can act as a decoration, a source of noise and a source of expense. If they are included with the case, that's fine. I just wouldn't make that the main reason to buy it. And here's why. By putting two fans in a bed ventilated case, I dropped 26 degrees on the CPU and 14 on the GPU. But adding four more, the improvement was only 4 degrees of the graphics card and 0.4 on the processor. If you put everything right, but the problem with the high temperature remains, you need to look for a cost somewhere else. The fans are only needed to provide cool air to the main cooling system. And if it's not enough, the internal components will overheat anyway and even 10 fans will not help. For those of you who suffer from high temperatures, I'll leave links to some good coolers, fans and thermal pastes in the video description. Take a look, maybe it will be useful. At last, you can see from my video how much of a role a computer case plays. With the same number of fans, the temperature differs significantly. Make a discount that my version of the airflow case is too good and in reality the results will be slightly worse, but even so, if your goal is the best temperatures, then choose models where the design is not interfere with the air circulation. That way you can win 5 to 7 degrees. Basically, that's all the information for today. I hope this video was useful. 
See you in the next videos. My name is Roma. Good luck.